The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Welcome to worship as part of St. Philip's Lutheran Church in Hastings, Minnesota. I am Pastor Greg Geyer bringing you greetings on behalf of our community of faith with thanks for your participation in our online worship. Helping make this service possible is Greg McKenzie, who is taking care of our video editing this week. John Disher is on sound and slides. Our organist, Noreen Swanson, is providing music, and we are also grateful for Ellen Disher and helping with singing. And our lector this day is Cindy Toppin. Let us take a moment now as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We worship God as we live our lives, remembering our baptisms in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he makes, makes me lie down in green pastures. pastures. He, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us join our voices in singing, I heard the voice of Jesus say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty ones, to look down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found my star, my sun, and in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. 
we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing our song of praise. All glory be to God on high, and peace to earth be given. Let angels sing, let all reply, good will break forth from heaven. Lord God, Almighty Heaven's King, we worship you, our thanks we sing, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, creation's author, O Lamb of God, your death alone takes sin. right hand, receive our prayer, have mercy. To you alone, O God, we cry, the Holy One, we name you. For you alone, our God most high, one living God, we claim you. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ, with God the Spirit ever blessed, in God the Father's glory. Amen. We pray together. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our worship continues with our readings from Scripture. The reading for today is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you at that time, without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, 
but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. The gospel for today is Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34 and 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no le leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats or whatever to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. And it is time for our children's message. And I want to talk a little bit today where when Jesus saw this crowd of people and they all had all these needs and they were wanting everything, our Bible says that Jesus had compassion on them for they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now, we know that shepherds are in charge of taking care of the sheep, but the shepherd also guides the sheep, provides the sheep, protects the sheep. If you are sheep without a shepherd, that means that they were just wandering around, getting, they could be getting into danger, not knowing, and then Scripture says, then Jesus gathered them and started teaching them, teaching them God's word. And just as those people could be sheep without a shepherd, sometimes we try and wander off and we can be sheep without our shepherd. But Jesus continually calls us back because Jesus is our good shepherd. It is Jesus who provides for us. It is Jesus who guides us. It is Jesus who protects us. In all these things, we are the sheep and Jesus is our good shepherd. And we can give thanks that it is Jesus who always comes and rescues us from the powers of sin, from when we make mistakes, when we start to wander off where we shouldn't go, it's Jesus who brings us back into his loving arms. Would you sing with me, my friends? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Back in March of 2020 and even a little before, we realized that things were getting really, really serious with this COVID-19 thing. After we temporarily suspended in-person worship, Sunday school, confirmation, adult eds, and all other meetings at our church facility, we were all forced to start doing ministry in a different, new way. 
we learned about this thing called Zoom, of which I had never heard before, and we learned about the limits of trying to live stream worship with a limited older Wi-Fi system. Every person on your staff ministry team at St. Philip's had to learn several new skills, some of which were nowhere to be found in their job descriptions. Extra hours were worked, and there were times when it felt like we were trying to tread water while holding a cinder block under one arm. It was a steep learning curve all the way around, and I'm sure many of you can relate in your own lives. Yet, as tired as we were at times in those first months, I don't know if our fatigue could compare to that of the disciples in today's gospel passage. And this is how I know. Jesus and the disciples are so constantly inundated with the needs of the public that they have no time to even eat. That was never me. In fact, eating is one of the things I did too much over the last 16 months. Jesus and the disciples were moving from one person to another to another in an inexhaustible torrent of need, pain, and affliction. And Jesus invites the disciples then to take a break. And even then, they are hounded. Notice that our gospel text never says that they ever got any peace and quiet. Ask yourself this, please. As we worship together, who represents us in this text? Are we the needy crowds seeking healing? Are we the disciples called to serve and flooded with a sea of human need? Jesus invited those disciples to come away to a quiet place. Isn't that why we gather to worship? For rest and renewal? So many of us are so busy. The demands of work are many and varied, but they are relentless. We may fall prey to thinking that only those in the so-called helping professions are meeting the world's needs, but that's just not true. It's a fast-moving, complex world that takes a lot of specialization to keep things moving. If you use a bank, drive a car, if you ever purchase new socks or groceries, if anything you own is insured, if you use electricity or natural gas, if you like entertainment, if you generate trash and recycling, then you understand that jobs of all descriptions make up the world we live in and have value. You'd be hard-pressed to name a vocation that is not useful in serving the neighbor. Most work addresses some kind of need. The world is always moving, always needing, and there are so many people. Trying to keep your head above water is a common experience in the workplace. Add family, house, sports schedules, music lessons, the kind of exercise routine that keeps the heart healthy, and you have a life that is full to overflowing. All this is a cliche, I know. You've heard it before, how busy we are. And if the preacher enters into a well-worn groove, you feel the urge to maybe look at your watch or hit fast forward. And for all the repetition of how busy we are, I also know that there are those who hear this and think that they must be on the sidelines because they still have empty time. When you gather, when you come to worship, are you arriving as one who needs healing? Or are you an overworked disciple? How does it feel to rush through your week and then come to worship, be confronted with more of the world's need? When you hear talks of mission, of discipleship, or of Bible study, or stewardship, or signing up for vacation Bible school, or the garage sale, we may feel like we are being charged with yet another responsibility. Do you ever come to worship and feel like those disciples who never got their lunch break? 
Who are you in this passage? It makes a difference for worship. Those who come for the quiet want the world to go away just for a little while. Some of us, though, want worship to be a time out when we get a slice of heaven and leave out the crying needs of a fallen world. Yet others want relevance. Why speak of Jesus at all if we can't see how it matters in our daily lives out in the streets? How can we ignore the impact of climate change, poverty, and homelessness? How we view race and our history? Clearly, Jesus did not come with a cold shoulder. Jesus did not practice the kind of spirituality where quiet contemplation means living so far from the crowds that you can no longer hear them. But even Jesus used quiet time and offered it to others. Jesus did not scour the countryside, putting a band-aid on absolutely every scratch. As big as those crowds were, Jesus didn't cure every illness in Persia, Africa, India, and so on. And we all know people dear to us who have not always been cured as we would hope and pray. This text, as busy as it is, is saying that Jesus came for another reason, a bigger mission. Jesus came to claim the world and to cleanse it and to call to his side every person who knows what it is to be broken, hurting, scared, overwhelmed, and spent. Jesus could not do that as a man in a human body, going one by one to each person. He could only do it with a declaration of God's love, so profound, so clear, so shocking, that people would still listen to the story after 20 centuries. Jesus didn't heal every sad case because he was on his way to the cross to make the world notice, to save the world. Who are we as we gather? The needy or the workers? Both of them had Jesus. The crowds and the disciples, all of them were dear to him. Any of them might move from one category to the other. You might be in dire need now or later. You who have ears to hear are also called. But Jesus did not just call those workers without equipping them and empowering them. And none, no one, falls outside of his care. In today's psalm, we have an image of the Lord as shepherd. For many of you, this is a beloved memory piece. For some, perhaps another religious cliche. It's easy to hear the words and miss the meaning. God is the shepherd who provides. Food and water among the first things. God will not leave you to your task with nothing to eat, nothing for your thirst. That is one reason we worship. And our hunger and thirst return again and again, which is why we worship again and again. The shepherd prepares a table, a meal in the presence of enemies, I take this to mean that even in a world where there is war, disease, corruption, greed, and cold indifference, even when we arrive with our heads barely above water, that is exactly when and where God sets the table for us, where you are right now. The peace of God does surpass our understanding what sustains us is a living word, creating green pastures and still waters, even in the heart of Bedlam. God loves you now. It may be 
that all we can do here is claim that the fringe of God's garment is present, but we will claim that this is enough, enough for what is really wrong with us when we arrive to worship broken and sick. We touch the fringe of God's garment. We hear the gospel. God loves the world so much that even the torture of a cross will not deter God's grace. It may be that you arrive at worship as one seeking comfort and healing, and you leave as a disciple, called and empowered to give and serve in Jesus' footsteps, knowing that the needs go on, but also that God's power is sufficient. All who touch this word are healed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join our voices in prayer as we sing, O Christ, your heart compassionate. We are made God's people through our baptism into Jesus Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. To the prompt, God of mercy, please respond here our prayer. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. 
raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. God of mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. We pray especially for those areas afflicted with drought as well as those that are experiencing flooding. God of mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. God of mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. God of mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. God of mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in our good shepherd, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And And also also with you. If you are with someone as you are worshiping with us this morning, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with them. And if you are worshiping alone with us, we we pray that you may feel Christ's loving presence with you. Peace be with you. We continue to thank and praise God with our tithes and our offerings and are grateful for the continued faithful witness of your stewardship of so many in supporting Jesus' work in, through, and beyond St. Philip's Lutheran Church. And if you are supporting another Christian ministry, we thank you for that faithfulness as well. together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let us join our voices in prayer as we sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures, feed us, for our use your fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your will. Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. You are loved. Be at peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.